um, thank you for having us first of all. So my name's Pega. I am assistant head teacher at STAGS and I lead on PSHE as well as anti-bullying. Um, also the pupil premium lead as well in the school. And I think that's quite important because there is a real connection there in terms of um, vulnerable students, disadvantaged students, um, and obviously the correlation in terms of bullying and unkindness. Um, and so I think it makes sense that I lead on anti-bullying. Um, and then with me is Sally Ann Taylor, who's assistant head teacher, um, responsible for sixth form, but also leads on um, on equality, diversity and inclusivity at STAGS as well. We are part of a trust, a multi-academy trust. Um, and so what we're going to talk about, parts of what we're going to talk about are also uh, connected with our um, partner schools as well. So I'm going to hand over with, to Sally Ann to begin with, because I think it's important for us to set the scene in terms of the context of the school and what really triggered our drive for EDI to be um, really in the spotlight um, at our school. So thank you so much and thank you for having us. Um, so ultimately, I think with EDI and anti-bullying, they literally go hand in hand in terms of moving forwards and ensuring that students feel represented, included, and also feel that their voices are consistently heard across every element um, of the school community, but also beyond that. Um, so here at Stags, we are a multicultural school and um, we are in Hertfordshire. And I think there is a little bit of a disparity about, OK, it can be defined as quite an affluent area. So issues of, for example, bullying, um, racism, sexism, et cetera, and classism are no longer relevant in that area. But I think what we wanted to make sure as a school, as well as a trust, is and a to, girl school and that. a girl school yeah. is to ensure that student voice is heard and basically the development of EDI throughout the community um, came through because of the conflict actually in Israel and Palestine a few years ago and we needed a safe space for students to identify their voice but also make sure they felt included and had that sense of belonging regardless of their background and that kind of led us to work with um, Hearts for Learning our county on developing and embedding equality, diversity, inclusivity throughout everything, not just the academic curriculum, but also the pastoral curriculum. Um, so that ultimately, in terms of embedding EDI, came through in the pastoral and the academic curriculum. One element of embedding it within the pastoral curriculum is having form time, so one form time a week across the whole school that is focused on equality, diversity, inclusivity. So, for example, celebration um, of neurodiversity. What does that mean? What does that look like? And how does that look? for example, individuals within the school. Also in terms of Black History Month, doing um, form times, but also whole school assemblies. So all students are aware of the kind of language that's appropriate and that we do not accept inappropriate language that is linked to anything to do with EDI and actually addressing the difference. And this comes into what we've been doing for anti-bullying this week as well, in terms of addressing those issues of bantering versus bullying, because we noticed that students were using the kind of language that they thought, oh, it's just banter, I'm just joking, but actually was uh, could be seen as racially charged. So we wanted to ensure that students were aware of that level of accountability and encouraging students to be upstanders rather than bystanders. And for the past three years, that has been our focus in terms of the student voice. So they feel that they can advocate for their peers, but also for anyone around them that actually we don't engage with content that would be deemed inappropriate or, for example, something that might be seen as bullying towards another child that actually we want to make sure that everyone has that sense of belonging so we did that in the pastoral we also opened up so every wednesday lunchtime they have a safe space to discuss key issues because issues such as for example the israel palestine conflict that is ongoing they need a safe space to have those conversations but also so that can be facilitated by members of staff on how to manage conversation where you don't necessarily agree and they can be emotionally charged and then further on to that, we added in elements of decolonization, which is in terms of the academic curriculum to ensure that every student feels represented and included in that sense of belonging. So that is in, for example, we did a diversity audit, which basically allowed 
the curriculum leaders, which are our heads of department, as well as heads of year, to look at what's represented within their curriculum areas and whether that representation is representative of the student body and of the importance of that representation so that they feel that they or that there's a positive representation. Because what we were noticing was in some elements of, for example, history and sociology, it was a negative representation of certain minority ethnic groups that was coming through. We need to make sure that actually, why aren't we celebrating um, those kind of groups further and ensuring that students have appropriate role models? And ultimately what that has done is increase the student voice, increase student representation um, in terms of across student leadership, but also allowing students to really, really challenge behaviour if they think it's inappropriate and know that they can come to any member of staff. Alongside that, as I mentioned earlier, is multifaceted. So it has to also be about empowering staff to be confident in addressing any issues in terms of equality, diversity, and inclusivity. What that ultimately means is that we strive every day to be inclusive and also maintaining that we are an anti-racist school. And that includes every single member of staff on site as well as the school community. So ultimately, we've been working on this project. This is now one of our key area tar targets and it will continue to be because the work of equality, diversity, and inclusivity is never done. Um, it is ultimately something we want to embed through everything that we do to basically ensure that any language that's inappropriate is dealt with appropriately, but also that students are aware for the wider world of what they're going into in this ever-changing world. And that kind of then has come full circle, which I'll hand mm, over to Peg yeah. about now. I mean, I think just from that starting point in terms of the way that we that we started the work and what we recognised within ourselves, I think it's quite easy to celebrate your successes as a school, but it's really, really important to be able to reflect and sometimes they're hard pills to swallow, but you don't grow and you can't challenge yourself and be the best um, in terms of, of professionals and teachers and carers for young people if you're not doing that continually. And our demographic has changed. Yes. And I think that's part of the reason why we're evolving um, as much as we are. Um, but, you know, alongside that and the way that that has evolved, we have now got things like sex talks, which is the weekly um, session in form time that Sally Ann mentioned. And then we've got the sex talks about, which is the thing that, that, that it triggers. And so students can then talk extensively at lunchtime if they want to, depending on what that topic is for example, Israel and Palestine. Um, but um, we we have gone beyond that because what we also have is drop down days. We've got two personal development days in the academic year. One of them focused on personal development and the other one actually solely focused on EDI and celebrating the diversity that we have in the school, recognizing the demographic that we have and making sure that students feel a sense of belonging is, is what's really, really important. Um, and so when we um, look at our PSHE curriculum, of course, anti-bullying is definitely within that, um, but it's about making sure that it's embedded. Our inclusivity is embedded, and because once it's embedded and it's not an add-on, it's not tokenistic. It's not tokenistic. You have a reduction in marginalization, a reduction in bullying. And so we have come full circle. I have just completed an, a survey with the students using the ABA uh, survey questions on their feelings and their sense of belonging. And it was overwhelming. Over 90% of our students feel happy. They feel a sense of belonging. They feel heard. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, they feel represented. Um, and I think that's that's something that, like sally was saying, we'll continue to work on. Um, and, and, and yeah, so for example, we've got our anti-bullying conference happening on Friday. We do this yearly in anti-bullying week. Students come together, our anti-bullying captains come together um, and we come up with a charter. We come up with ideas, they receive training and that becomes more and more um, embedded, but also more and more detailed and in depth year on year, focusing on specific things that we recognise in our school um, need a bit of a spotlight on them in relation to bullying. Basically, the diversity audit, um, we started it last year and ultimately um, it was, uh, we use Google here, so it was a Google spreadsheet with the subjects and then I highlighted, I can't remember off the top of my head, the, the columns, but ultimately there were some that were like, 
do we have representation in our um, classroom displays? When is it that we will see people that are neurodi neurodiverse? When will we see people of colour? Um, when will we see those that identify as disabled? And so on and so forth. And asking the heads of department to identify where they will we will see those in the curriculum. And then what we what they, we then asked them to do at a department meeting was to actually, okay, where's a gap? Where are we actually seeing that? And what the department leads were seeing was, oh, actually, I didn't even think that we're only mentioning, for example, neurodiversity in media representation. I'm a sociology teacher, so sorry, mm -hmm. but in media representations. And that's through a negative angle through this study that was completed um, in the early 2000s. So actually, what can we do to further develop that and improve that representation? So then we added an extra column which said, OK, what are we doing next? Next steps. Then we had heads of department moving through with their departments actually what does that look like and then we did another check three months later about okay what have we done what can we see and then we just did a work scan last week um, of departments and part of the work scan was to look at EDI so it's something that we're keeping uh, moving forwards I would say it's amazing to do because it really gets you thinking about okay where is in, like what are we doing for inclusivity because sometimes you get and we know as, as um, practitioners you get wrapped up in the curriculum that actually to shine a specific light on EDI makes you really question and actually think, okay, where's that positive representation coming through? For me, certainly it was learner voice. Mm -hmm. So the most paramount thing and what I'm really proud of at STAGS is that we have so many different forums of getting learner voice. Yeah. So PSHE, of course, is one of them. We have the Ask It Basket, which is an anonymous opportunity for students at the end of lessons to just literally drop in and we make every single student do it so that it really is anonymous regardless of whether they have something specific they want to feed back. And so they will note there, for example, I'm having friendship issues or whatever it is that they might be wanting to express. Another way that we do it is through our um, senior leadership team. Yeah. So we've got a fantastic sixth form that leads student parliament. And so we are there to oversee mm -hmm. it, but it's really led by the students and it's for the students. And so there they are able to also express what's happening on the ground, their experiences when teachers aren't around. So they are really our guiding force in terms of what the needs are for the school. Um, so I would absolutely recommend that you get really strong learner voice, but, but do it in different forums. So get that qualitative data mm -hmm. alongside your quantitative. Um, speak to your vulnerable students, yes. see what their take is, their protected characteristics and how they feel they're being represented or not. <clears throat> so learner voice is really key. The other aspect that I introduced um, was the anti-bullying log. So mm -hmm. honestly, uh, bullying really is rare at STAGS. And I think that's because of all the hard yes. work that we're doing to embed it. <clears throat> but of course, it's not completely and utterly non-existent. We're a school, we're acknowledging that. So we have an anti-bullying log. And what, what happens with that is our directors of learning, which are our heads of years, as well as our heads of key stage, will track <clears throat> any unkindness. So it's not a bullying log, it is an anti-bullying log. And what that means is they have drop down options and they will write down the students that were involved, what the students that were involved, what role they played. Were they bystanders? Were they mm -hmm. upstanders? Were they the victim? Were they the perpetrators, for example? We then ask the Dolls and Hogs to identify those students and if they had any protected characteristics so we can track and monitor what's going on for those students. And then they identify what has happened, what the incident is and what the next steps are. So, and then they have to revisit it about three weeks later to check in with those students and make sure everything is still okay. So it's really important that we're not just monitoring and tracking mm -hmm. and saying, this is what's happened, but going back. And that's something that Eliane also mentioned. It's important to revisit what you're doing to really measure whether or not it's having the impact that you need and want it to have. Um, <clears throat> and so what that also means is if we then identify, actually this student is being repeatedly bullied or this student is being repeatedly identified as being unkind then maybe now we need to deeming it we need to deem it as bullying and there needs to be further intervention in place so i would recommend rather than just having a bullying log have that anti-bullying almost that shadow data that is informing what's happening for those students 
so that you are being um you know you're 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 not being reactive but actually you're being proactive in preventing it from leading to bullying is what i would recommend those are my two areas we also have a Friday morning briefing. It's called Stag's Bites. So it really is bite-sized snippets that are digestible. Um, we actually um, kind of make ours a little bit more attractive by having a prize box. So staff are then quizzed about what has been delivered to them. Um, and so then they get a prize, whether it's stationary or chocolate, we just run around the, the hall um, handing out prizes, which, which really helps. Um, but we, um, yeah, so what I do, for example, um, as people premium lead, but also what uh, Senko does as well is we put a spotlight on key students. So we will highlight the specific individual needs of key students so that they are at the forefront of our staff minds. Um, and that includes our educational support staff so that they're aware as well. Um, the other aspect that we do is we now have made it an expectation that if you're joining STAG as a member of staff, as part of your induction, you have got to do the Anti-Bullying Alliance training. You have to watch it before you join us so that you understand, even at a basic level, what bullying is, how sophisticated it's become um, and how it is evolving. So that if you've got someone in HR walking through our school site at break time, it isn't about I'm not taking ownership of that because it's not my responsibility. And I think that's that's the language we use consistently across everything. So while I may not be Senko, we do it with Senko, we do it with English as additional language, young carers, high prior retainers, of course, ethnic minorities. We continually send the message that it is everybody's problem. It is everybody's business and it is everybody's responsibility. And until and, and once you have that and you have that culture, um, like Barbara was saying, I think that's really, really key. So, yeah, very similar in terms of the way we do it. Have an email address there's anti-bullying at stags all those emails come straight to through to me um and then i am able to see what it is that they've said um yes we do have an anonymous drop box as well but we also have our senior leaders in the sixth form team so we have three well-being and anti-bullying captains um, and they lead our anti-bullying um form captains we've got a google classroom that's quite lively and so they kind of have conversations and and, and discuss things with each other our anti-bullying well-being captains actually delivered a stag's bite so we've got students to come into our friday morning briefing they delivered the banter versus bullying poem they also spoke really from their own experiences as the students the voice of the students what they see is happening um, at ground level and then they took that to every assembly as well so they raised awareness they showed their face they said to every student in the school this is who we are come and find us and we're also um doing a bit of a and it might be a bit off piece from what they were asking but we're doing a acts of kindness award we're going to start raising that profile because i think what's really important is that while we're talking about anti-bullying and yes we want to make sure that we're stamping that out we also want to flip it on its head and make it a positive Positive and promote kindness and promote cohesion and being one community and, and we do that through our stags values um, and our, our intent um, for every student mm -hmm.